Warning, do this only at home, not in a lab. Don't even consider it. A lab is a place full of hazardous materials and contaminated glassware. Glassware used for food must only be used for food and only with food grade reagents. Well, life has given us lemons again. Also, there's only so much you can drink out of the lab's alcohol supply. So, let's make some limoncello. I'll be making my limoncello using a beautiful piece of glassware called the Soxlet Extractor. Quite a tongue twister. I'm going to be demoing it right now with uh, some M&Ms and I'll be using water to extract their outer shell. This isn't the normal mode of operation for this device and in a moment I'll talk about what a uh, normal mode of operation is, but in this case the weird thing I'm doing is adding the solvent manually. So I'm pouring in water. However, what is working normally, and you'll see it in a moment, is that when the water reaches a certain height, it starts getting siphoned off. And there it goes. You can see the small tube on the side going all the way down. It's sucking down all of the water into a collection flask on the bottom. So far, normal operation. What's different is this collection flask isn't heated in this case. Usually it would be heated, uh, letting vapor go up through the big tube you see on the side and out of the top of the Soxlet extractor. Now let's watch the siphon operate one more time just because it's cool. There, another successful siphoning. So our Collected stuff goes into this flask on the bottom, which would be heated with vaporizing all the way up to the top. And usually we would have a condenser on the top. So this pure distilled vapor would be dripping onto our target stuff and then siphoning off, taking things with it. That way we'd have a continuous collection through a pure solvent without adding more and more solvent to the system. So, to get ourselves started, we'll add about 150 milliliters of high-proof alcohol to a flat-bottom flask, and then we'll drop in a stir bar, which is easier said than done when it's magnetic and sticks itself to the bottom of your hot plate device and you have to go and grab it from underneath. But once you've got it, you drop in the stir bar, and you're ready to go. You turn on the heating and the stirring, and place the preloaded socks in the extractor. As you'll see in a moment, I've filled the socks of extractor with uh, lemon peels and there's a bit of cotton on top and a bit of cotton on the bottom. There are too much lemon peels in it, I can already tell you in advance. I made a slight miscalculation and as a result somewhere in the middle had to remove some. Unfortunately I didn't get any good footage of it running. So let's skip to the end. Our Alcohol is going to be very nice and yellow, also very fragrant, but you can't smell it through the glass or through the screen. Our lemon peels, on the other hand, are going to be very pale. You have to remember you don't want to over-extract them or it might become bitter, so it's fair to stop about this point. So we let it all cool down, and at that point we filter it. It gives it a nicer, smoother flavor once it's filtered. Uh, we filter it specifically through a piece of cotton you can't see that I've stuck into this funnel. So we pour out our uh, flat bottom flask and we pour out the contents of our socks extractor because it is an important rule in life never to waste booze. Once we've poured those through and they take their time dripping and dripping and dripping, this isn't going to be the fastest thing, we can start making ourselves a syrup. 200 milliliters of water, 200 grams of sugar, 29 attempts at recording this bit and I don't know why it's not that hard to explain that 90% alcohol is going to burn you. Also, the fact that it has lemonine in it, which is what makes it smell like lemon, does not help. So in order to dilute it, we're making ourselves some sugar water and we're going to mix the two and get a traditional 20% alcohol limoncello rather than very painful yellow liquid, which we have now. At last, everything's done filtering, everything's done dissolving. We just need to mix our last two liquids and get our characteristic opaque yellow limoncello. 
About time, too, I need a stiff drink. Our result is, well, limoncello. It's indistinguishable from any other limoncello, nice and smooth, and done in a fraction of the time. So, job well done, I guess. The system works. Finally, I know it's very disappointing that I don't have a nice video of the Saxo extractor running, but I have one in a future video. Here's a nice preview. I promise I'll show it next time.